in high school, I did a project on uh, Buddhism. And I read about Siddhartha and how he grew up in this palace. He had everything he ever wanted, anything he wanted. And he wanted to, to, to search for enlightenment. And so he just left the palace and left everything. And uh, that's, I think that's a beautiful thing. And um, so it's kind of, kind of, I don't know, I kind of, I feel that, you know, I can relate to that. There's always going to be a reason why you shouldn't do it. What's my, my parents going to think? What, what's everybody else going to think? You know, um, I'm going to lose my income and all that stuff. That's really serious stuff. And it's not something that you can just ignore. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people don't take the leap. And it's because those things, those reasons why you shouldn't do it, take such a big hold on you that it just cripples you and it, it um, you f it makes you feel like you have no choice. Um, and I felt that for a little bit. I basically just want to get the experience under my belt because working at a brewery is so high demand that the only way I can get in to get the experience is to just give my, my time free. And that's the only way I can get my foot in the door. This is where all the magic begins. Even if I just help for a day, on a brew day or a canning day or bottling day, I don't care about working 15 hours a day at a brewery because at the same time, it's I enjoy it so much that it's not even really work for me. One of the things that uh, my old boss said to me, he said to me, um, he said, Dan, he said, life is too short to be unhappy. And so after my, uh, my shift, you know, I went home, went to bed, woke up the next morning and I said, I called up and I said, you can take me off payroll. Thank you very much. <laughs> so. to work for uh, a company that does hair transplantation. So I, I was the training manager for a corporate company that does medical hair transplantation. And I was working there for seven years. I was in charge of training and I also spearheaded an outsourcing initiative that brought, well, I basically opened two call centers in the Philippines um, for my company. And that's what I was doing when I was there. And I, I was working there for almost seven years. And after that, I figured, you know, it's this isn't really what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't think I'm um, I'm meant to be selling hair to people.
can't really uh, bomb a hill because longboards freak me out. Uh, but I can ollie and kickflip on a longboard. Holy shit, <laughs> yeah, I've, tried, but... I've tried ollieing on a longboard before. That's <laughs> fucking hard. Like, yeah, dude. That's fucking hard. Well, do that for a little while and then get on a short no, board makes... and you're like, no. holy shit, dude. Yeah. This thing's really short. Yeah. Ah. It was around me growing up, so, you know, I just took that as an example, you know, so, I mean, I, I saw from my mom and my dad just both unhappy with what they're doing, so why be like that? Um, is it hot? It's water. What is your hot? Huh? What happened to you? <laughs> You're pink. <laughs> so I decided to kind of go my own way and figure out things my own way. So that's uh, find happiness by any means necessary. It was like I, w I was in a machine, you know, um, when I was working. It's, it's addicting, you know, knowing that you can reach a certain level, um, wearing the clothes, you know, um, playing the part. It's, it's really something that gets you going, you know. So one day I just woke up and I knew, I knew that I needed to, to let everything go, to sell my car, sell my apartment, sell my possessions, and finally just quit my job to be able to do this thing for myself. It was just time for me, and, and so I did. For me, this place is perfect because I don't, I don't have to think about money. Uh, money was my you know, biggest distraction growing up. And it's, it just kills, it kills creativity. Like, I think money is one of, it's, it's a motivator for some people, but for me, it's, it's the worst motivator because it, it really perverts my, my thought process. And, and here, my, my motivation for creating things is really, really clean. You have to practice a bit. But it's become better. So I said, if we learn something, it should end in an object. So this calls actually, this is the training sphere. <clears throat> this, is, this is full of energy because here is a, a lot of people worked in from Italy, from Spain, from, from, uh, from
from Germany, of course, from from Poland, uh, from Brazil, people heard and put something on. If you're curious, you could put something on while you are here. In this sphere and all these materials are leftovers out of my project. Because when I do something, either for stage or starting or furniture for here or whatsoever, the leftovers end up here. Mm. So this is a cosmos full of power. Mm. I've been living independently since I was about 14 or 15. And I've basically, for the last 10 years, because I'm 23 now, um, just experienced 10 years of sort of neurotic fear of being, you know, not having enough money or finding somewhere to stay or sort of ticking all the boxes so that I can receive benefits and, you know, have a home to stay in. And meanwhile, looking for jobs that I don't want to do and, and pretending that I'm some sort of perfect commercial commodity that fits into a, into a, a supermarket somewhere. I was always a bit afraid of sitting just alone in the barn and, and building something. So I thought, okay, I will at least write an offer and look if somebody will, will write back. I think over the last two years I had about 40 helpers from, when I counted last time, I think it was 18 countries. Some people just came because it was really building and some, some really came because they wanted to, to work in this direction afterwards. So it was both, I was always helping to build things, but mostly when there were for the catamaran two parts that you have to build, the second part they built on their own. So they saw that they can do all these things. The plan was to name the boat Esperanto. The idea was afterwards to name one hull Esperanto and the other hull Esperanta. So like having a female hull and a male hull, even from the names. In the second year of the of the boat building, I got an email from from Jesus. He was an architect in Spain, and he came um, with the plan to to help. He also liked working on the catamaran. As he was an architect, he liked the idea of thinking about using space or developing developing things. Esto, that's this, and then we are going to add this. Or no, it does. Uh, okay, the whole. Are you sure? You can make it once and you can just see how much it is and then we can... And you have to wait a bit because there's so much coming out. Then it's 135, something like this. More, not more? Not more, compadre. How much is it? The 100? 136. Well, I'm, I'm Jesus Pavon Fernandez. Uh, I'm a guy from, from Almendrejo, Badajoz. It's a region in Spain and I choose Karsten because... Okay, I'm an architect and I was trying to get as um, similar as possible to my job. Then my relation with him is, is, is similar to brothers because uh, we were really, really uh, understanding each, each other because of this international way to think and really open-minded with new people. His whole family and him, uh, they were really, really appreciating my help and, and we have a, a really, really family relation. It's uh, like my, my, my second family. alternatives and so if you don't know that there is something else or that you're inside something if you don't know you're inside something it's hard to get out of that thing 
and I think that's probably step one of why it's so hard for people to move from um, monetary environments to more elaborate environments like this. Um, step two is that people are probably quite scared um, or, or basically tied into the system through their family and people that depend on them. <laughs> This is really a luxury that is afforded only to, to a few people. More or less every time I speak to my family, they're like, yeah, but how are you going to make money? That's, that's pretty much all they ever say to me. Um, so they can't appreciate the value, a non-monetary a non value. And for me, this is like the, gr the greatest value I've found here, you know, in my life so far. Um, which is just uh, the ability the ability to be me uh. I am also since 20 years a volunteer here, if you see it in this way, because we are not paid, we have no salary. But I know that uh, this what I do, I feel is much more luxury life than I would have $6,000 in a month and uh, would buy, I don't know what kind of nonsense. No, I, I feel much more sense in the way I live. That's cool. Oh. Are you with me? Yeah? Good, we have it. It's like a, a small island, somehow, like countries maybe a bit exaggerated, but a small island of, of yeah, something, some people that are trying to do something together. Yeah, I like about the idea of a boat that you have the, the freedom that all the necessities of life you take with you. It gives you the possibility to be at any place, but to really live there. Maybe this is what it will end up being, like just being a small island that is moving, who can choose the harbor and then just looking for, for work there. It's definitely a fair deal when you are paying each other with the time or with, with some real things like accommodation and food. On the one hand, having money is somehow um, comparably with having the freedom to do something else, but to get the money, it always links you to something. You just need to um, have some kind of contract, some kind of regularity in your life and spend time with, um, with earning money. I like the idea of having this option to be really to really quit the society somehow. I don't dislike the society around me, but it gives me a nice feeling that I don't have to be in it, but just like I can choose being in it.
<laughs> yeah, I'm Maddalena, an Italian from the north of Italy. And what do I do in life? Wow. Actually, I just quit my job, and that's the reason why I'm here, because I decided for a change. I was tired of working many hours and not having time for myself. And so I decided to come to Germany to learn German, but I'm actually improving my English. <laughs> Madalena, right? She came here um, a few months back and she stayed a month. And what she's doing is um, she's got a degree in languages and she's a language specialist, but she couldn't get a job. She started um, a degree in massage, totally different field. And she came here for the month. And when she arrived, uh, for the first three days, she was freaking out. She didn't know why she came here and what she was here for. Okay. And she phoned her sister, and her sister said to her, what's the problem out there? She said, they don't understand me. They're crazy people. Uh, they think totally different from me. And the sister turned around and laughed and said, so it sounds just like home then. <laughs> Ich bin die Lena, ich bin hier aus Frankfurt und bin seit drei Jahren bei Antagon dabei und bin während der Sommerwerf für die Volunteers verantwortlich, um die alle zu organisieren und ansonsten bin ich bei Antagon auch Schauspielerin. vielleicht an unserem Theater ist, dass wir ähm, alle zusammen leben und ähm, Arbeit sowie Leben teilen und ähm, wir haben ein großes, großes Haus und dort trainieren wir zusammen, wir duschen dort alle zusammen, wir haben eine große Küche und Gästeräume und eine große Trainingshalle natürlich, aber wir selbst alle leben draußen, in Wegen, in Karawans, in Bussen und ähm, ja, wir sind eine kleine kollektive Gruppe eine Community und ähm, probieren mit wenig Geld zu leben. Und eine große Sache, die wir zusammen machen, ist die Sommerwerft. Und ähm, ja, die ist meistens im Sommer. <lacht> Sommerwerft. 
und ähm, wir organisieren hier ein großes Festival. Und letztes Jahr hatten wir 80.000 Besucher, nur mal um so eine grobe Zahl zu haben. Ja. My previous job, I was working in a travel agency because I studied languages. So I just wanted any job where I could use languages. And I was working in a ski resort area in the Alps for three years. Then one year ago, like, I, a big change happened in my life. Then my father died okay. one year ago. So I was like, shit, like, what am I gonna, what am I doing with my life? Like, am I really doing what I like? I can die tomorrow, like, because like he died all of a sudden, like in four days, he had a stroke, like he stayed in a coma for four days and, and he died and I was like, oh, wow. Visualizing. Let's the last to our finger. Linkers on. You know when you don't have any more like the ground under your feet? And so like I stayed in this kind of a bubble for one year, cause yeah. And that's why then I decided to quit my job and, and I was already into this massage thing. Cause I was looking for like a personal growing process and this massage thing just came to me. And I said, yeah, I just need it. And I started to do it just for myself. And then I, when I was doing it, I actually discovered that I love massaging. But like he was never like on the purpose to learn massage. It was just like, it's for me, I need it now. And then like everything changed, so. Yeah. May the light of truth become all the darkness. Victory to the light, Chai Good morning. Breakfast. Breakfast. <laughs> so, it's a push. Antagon, ich sage immer die Außenwelt, <lacht> weil wenn man in Antagon ist, ist das wie so eine eigene Welt für sich. Ähm, in meinem Leben davor war ich ähm, Sozialarbeiterin, also das habe ich studiert. Ich habe mit Jugendlichen gearbeitet und ähm, habe viele verschiedene Dinge eigentlich getan, parallel. Also ich war einmal Stylistin, ich habe fünf Jahre lang als Stylistin gearbeitet hier in Frankfurt. Ähm, als Stylistin muss ich sagen, ich habe ultra viel verdient, <lacht> wie es so in der Branche ist. Aber irgendwann dachte ich mir, für was das Ganze?
war in Indien sechs Monate und habe dort auch mit Kindern gearbeitet im Slum. Und ähm, da hat es so angefangen, als ich zurück nach Deutschland, um den Verbindung gerade zu bekommen, weil vorher habe ich überhaupt nicht drüber nachgedacht. Ich habe viel Geld verdient, alles war schön, ich bin auf die besten Partys gegangen, in die besten Restaurants und alles war toll. Ähm, nach Indien habe ich drüber nachgedacht, so, so was ist eigentlich wichtig und es hat sich halt hier was verändert. Und ich hatte ein Shooting, wo es irgendwie um Essen ging und ich ähm, als Stylistin muss man halt alles besorgen, was dazugehört. Und ich weiß noch, ich bin in die Kleinmarkthalle hier nach Frankfurt gegangen und habe irgendwie einen Fisch gekauft für... Keine Ahnung, für 100 Euro, ich weiß es nicht mal. Auf jeden Fall war er ultra teuer. Und dann haben wir den da schön dekoriert und alles gemacht und fotografiert dann. Und danach wurde er einfach weggeschmissen. Und es war so, meine Scheiße, so, äh, ähm, will ich nicht. Also ich hatte keine Lust mehr so zu arbeiten. Ja, und, ähm. Here, with all this work that we do, gardening, uh, dusting windows, painting windows, picking cherries, doing jams, like all these jobs, you really have the chance like, to meditate and think and get all this, like really work on this mind that is always trying like, basically like to fuck you. <laughs> but, but yeah, I bet you can switch it and you can actually use the mind to, to help you. I'm sorry, I made you cry. It's like your whole system reacts to a novelty. Because it's like, what are you doing? We are so good staying in here in our, you know, muddy thing without moving from here. It's okay, like I'm not shining, I don't feel powerful, but that's okay. It's better than not knowing where we're going, you know? It's like every time before I change, you're like, what am I supposed to do? Stay here, go there. And it's a bit the same. Yeah, you've never been told that you can actually create your life and create it positive especially, but you've always been used that, you know, life is a struggle and it's hard and you have to compete and, you know, everyone is going to attack you. You have that so much into your system that when someone says, no, you know, actually it's easy. <laughs> Just think that you can get in and you will get in. You're like, what are you talking about? It's too hard. Like, it's really hard, but it's possible. war mir dann wichtiger, Dinge zu machen, die auch einen Sinn haben. <lacht> Menschen irgendwie was zu zeigen, irgendwas zu bewegen, was zu verändern. Und ähm, nicht nur etwas zu machen, um Geld zu verdienen, um sich etwas leisten zu können. Was mir in einem Monat nicht mal gefällt oder was man eigentlich gar nicht braucht. Ich glaube, also manchmal, wenn ich jetzt abends irgendwie ein bisschen Freizeit habe und durch die Stadt gehe und spazieren gehe und mir die ganzen Menschen angucke, die da sitzen und ihre Cocktails trinken und Dinge tun, die ich früher auch getan habe und geliebt habe früher. Und ich, ich weiß aber nicht, was da passiert ist in mir. Also ich kann es nicht erklären. Ich weiß nur, dass es jetzt so ist, dass ich das jetzt so anfühlt, dass ich das nicht mehr brauche, dass mich das nicht glücklich macht. Und dass es mich viel glücklicher macht, irgendwie mit meiner Gruppe gemeinsam was 
zu erarbeiten, ein neues Stück und es dann Menschen zu präsentieren und etwas bei denen zu bewegen, sie zum Nachdenken anzuregen. Etwas schaffen für andere, dass, sie, dass es den anderen Menschen auch gut geht. Und, ähm When I came to this village, there were many people that frightened. They're frightened because they're a little bit different, uh, think differently, do different things. They ask me a question, I don't talk the same language, don't reply the same way. And now, like, like 15 years later, uh, just about everybody talked to me, just about everybody know me. Uh, many people respect what I say. It's done. It's done. You got it. The, the volunteers that come here uh, often want to know about compost. Uh, they want to know about the compost toilets. Uh, so I, I share what I have learned with this. I feel as I learn a lot from them as well. Is it easy for the people to use it? First time they see it? Yeah. It's pretty easy. You have these instructions, yeah? We'll have instructions inside that tell them what to do. Actually, when I first come here, I'm as fear as you. All the things here is not smelly. The waste is put here and then handled very correctly. And then after what, after two years, it will be very good soils to farm for farmers to to, to really plant their things inside. Also because of the process, like two years, uh, all the gems, all the uh, bad things, hormones, uh, chemicals that we digest and, and then we'll, we'll dissolve. So the plant will be perfectly healthy and good. Mm. It's bone. 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 Oh, there's a body oh. inside. Yeah, I think someone has been buried in the... <gasps> Most fertilizers uh, are dry. You know, they, they, make, they turn the soil into a, a, a chemical desert. I want to keep the organic matter alive in the topsoil. That's where all the life is in the topsoil. Instead of it being a waste where it pollutes the water cycle, we turn it into something that is healthy for the earth and therefore we're back in that natural cycle again. Shanti comes from, it's a Hindi word. Means uh, peace and love. And Literally, it means peace. <laughs> but then the Indian people, they use it, like to say, oh, Shanti, Shanti, like take it easy, or maybe to describe a place and say it's, it's a shanty life, place, no? uh, so like peaceful, relaxed, I don't know. Mm. It can apply to <laughs> many things. It's not just a business for us, it's uh, that we really like to, to share our place, our food, our everything with the people who come here. And, and so like uh, it's not really like a normal B&B. Firstly, because in Italy, a B&B 
is usually really small and we created like a kind of shanty village, we call it. <laughs> Swimming in the river of the shiny love makes me feel so high. So I'm talking to you about the cruise. Music plays in the autumn makes me feel so good. We had about from 10 to 20 volunteers every year. So. <laughs> around 80 <laughs> and there were some some of them who stayed for a very long time which we really like <laughs> More like a community. More than a family is like a community because anyway. With a boss, bro. Uh, no. <laughs> With two bosses. And two bosses. <laughs> Between me I think a lot of people live their lives uh, and they, they, they put up with things. They take second best or even less. They don't work for happiness. They don't strive for happiness. They put up with their work conditions, their health conditions, uh, their social conditions. Uh, and they have this illusion that they can buy things and by buying things it will fill their hole. You know, it'll, it'll make them complete. Maybe that little bit of happiness lasts for a few minutes. I find that quite sad. I believe the world is like, like a hologram. And you change one piece of the hologram and it changes the whole of the hologram. So if I change me and what I do, then it changes a bit of everything. I think it's more important to change me and try and change the rest of the world, because the world is me. I want to share what the things I've learned, but I also want to share the things that the others have learned as well. Creating that place where we can exchange those things that in a way that's healthy for everybody. I think it takes a lot of work. happy if uh, I have money, but other people haven't money. I, 
and also I think it makes you become more uh, um, mistrusting towards other people because you have to to save what you finally <laughs> got. You you keep it only for yourself. You don't share. You f What's the point in having something if you don't if you cannot share it or if you don't want to share it? I mean, it's useless. Quindi penso che la vita è fatta di, di persone, se, se, non, se non aiuti le persone no, non sei neanche vivo. Ragazzi, c'è del pampero qua, particolarmente buono. Se non lo volete... Non lo vogliamo. If I look at my life, no? uh, I have uh, many friends, true friends, I, I, I love my parts, my songs, I, I have a big uh, love. <laughs> but if I look lontano, farther, farther I, I can't uh, to be happy. No? I hope uh, in, uh, in another uh, world, no? This is a, a little word for me, but uh, I hope uh, shanty word. <laughs> What you are and what you want to be Oh, you can turn your life around anytime you please Nothing is impossible, belief is all you need Oh, you don't have to trust your luck Just plant a seed Life is an adventure, life is a dream Everything is flexible and not what it would seem Oh, dare to give yourself a chance To do the best you can Oh, plan a way to live your life Then walk your sacred plan Yes, plan a way to live your life Then walk your sacred plan Oh And if your world is getting dark and you do start to fear, just remember to turn on the light by making all things clear. And if you are unhappy and if you begin to doubt, just fill yourself with energy and then begin to shout. Oh, life is an adventure, life is a dream. Everything is flexible and not what it would seem. Oh, dare to give yourself a chance to do the best you can. Oh, plan a way to live your life. Then walk your sacred land Plan a way to live your life Then walk your sacred land There's a... No, how's it go? Oh, yeah. There's an old, old saying that's as old as old can be. Now faith can make a mountain move and love can set you free. So bless the world each morning and by it you'll be blessed. Just trust the power deep within and then expect the best. Just trust the power deep within and then expect the best. Oh, life is an adventure, life is a dream. Oh, everything is flexible and not what it would seem. Oh, Give yourself a chance to do the best you can, yes. Plan a way to live your life, then walk your sacred plan, yes. Plan a way to live your life, then walk your sacred plan. Oh, life is an adventure, life is a dream, oh. Everything is flexible and not what it would seem, oh. Dare to give yourself a chance to do the best you can, yes. Plan a way to live your life, then walk your sacred plan.